Good morning, The Place Church, and welcome to today's online service. I know you're going to be blessed by the word that Pastor Mike brings today. But before we get started, let's open up in prayer, and then I'll share with you some announcements and how you can give to The Place Church and God's kingdom. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Lord, we praise and we thank you for today's service, Father God. We thank you that your anointing is on Pastor Mike. Lord, that the ears that hear it today, Father God, that it does not fall on deaf ears, but Lord, it penetrates their spirit, soul, and body to increase them in your knowledge, Father God, in your word. And we praise you, Father God, for increase financially this day. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Praise the Lord. Just a few quick announcements before we get started this morning. Next Sunday is July 5th. We will be out at the Park and Praise paintball field. And service always starts at 1030 a.m. Weather permitting, so this is always subject to change. Stay tuned if things change. Also, our online church service is always available on Sundays at 12 o'clock. Kids Place at Home is always available at 2 o'clock p.m. And that will be today and it'll be a special kids place lesson. Also, Heart to Home Bible Study is tonight. It's always on Sunday nights at 6 o'clock p.m. This will be live streaming, prospering in tough times. And if you've never heard Pastor Michelle and Pastor Denise do this Bible study, you are going to laugh. You're going to be so joyful. I know it's going to bless your socks off. So 6 o'clock tonight, Sunday night, you'll be blessed by Heart to Home uh, Bible study and we are talking about prospering in tough times. You won't want to miss it. Also, VBS registration is now open. Praise God. We're super excited for VBS. It's going to be a great time this year. Everything's new. Everything's different. A lot of it's going to be outside completely. It's going to be an awesome time. July 27th through the 31st. And so registration is online. We are going to be having VBS out at the Hamilton Fairgrounds. This is free for all ages of four years old to 12 years old and spots are limited so get online on our website and sign your kids up as quickly as possible so that we can lock you in for a spot hallelujah so you can also watch our sermons on YouTube and our church app we love our church app and you can always access our stuff through the website also the way that you can give to God's kingdom to increase God's kingdom four ways that you can do that is number one through our website and that's h the number two hm.org also you can give through our church app what a blessing that church app is you can also text to give and you text the word give g-i-v-e to this number that is on your screen and that is a huge blessing as well also the fourth way that you can give today is through the mail we are furthering god's kingdom right here in the bitterroot valley reaching people changing lives and god is going to increase you according to his word like never before he sees what you've given in the past he sees the seeds that you've sown he knows that you've been faithful in your tithe and god is going to reward you greatly for it and so bless you in all of your giving hallelujah well at this time Please enjoy Pastor Mike as he preaches the supernatural becoming natural. God bless. This has been burning in my heart. I look at the world and there has to be a change. Amen. Amen. And there's one way that the change is going to come. That change is going to come through you. And you may say, I'm just a little old me. How in the world can I influence? How can I make a change for this world? And the answer is... Jesus lives in you. The kingdom of God lives in you. And great and mighty things can happen through you when we realize, when we know who we are and what Jesus has done for us. Amen? There's a gospel of salvation. You've heard the gospel of salvation. You've received Jesus as your Savior. He's your Lord. He's your Master. You're going to go to heaven. But a lot of Christians stop there. And they think, I've got it. Salvation is a supernatural thing. It is one of the most supernatural things you'll ever experience. You're going from darkness into the kingdom of His dear Son. You're going from darkness into the kingdom of light. You're go being translated from the kingdom of Satan into the kingdom of Almighty God. You're, you're going from experiencing hell on earth to experiencing heaven on earth. How many of you can uh, testify to that? There has been a radical change in your life because you have called Jesus your Lord and your Savior. And then what? A lot of Christians think we've just got to sit back and wait. Occupy until he comes. And the answer to that is a thousand times no. 
He has equipped us. He has given us powerful tools in order to see the kingdom of God established on this earth. Not only established, but advancing. The early church, they took the world and turned it upside down by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the power of the Word of God. They didn't sit back and just say, Jesus, when you come, you come. When I hear the trump, I'll either go up or I'll go by the way of the grave, but I'm going to see you in the sweet by and by. They didn't do that. They turned their world upside down by the power of the Word of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. They realized what God had given them. We may be living in 2020, but I'm telling you, Almighty God has something for you to do. And He has equipped you. He lives inside of you in the kingdom of heaven. All that God has is within inside of you right now. Our job is to stir ourselves up and realize what He's given to us. Our job is to get some knowledge about what God has done for us. What God has already given to us. And when we become aware of what He has done for us, and when we know what we have been given, then we will step out in faith and do the miraculous. We will allow Him to use our hands to heal the sick, take our feet where He wants us to go. The steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. He'll put you miraculously where He wants you to be. And you'll find behind you signs and wonders following you. Just like Jesus said. Signs and wonders will follow those that believe. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. It says in Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6, My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Why aren't we seeing the kingdom of God expand like we should? expand like they did in the book of Acts. We need some knowledge about God's kingdom that has been given to us. We already have it residing within us. The kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is within you. You have the kingdom of God within you. What is the kingdom of God? You read the entire book, Genesis to Revelation, the miracles, the signs, the wonders, the supernatural that you read about in the book is what's inside of you. Almighty God lives inside of you. And as you put the Word of God inside of you, you're putting Almighty God inside of you and the knowledge of who He is. And your faith will explode within you. And when the opportunity arises, you will find yourself performing miracles, signs, wonders, the supernatural. Your head may swim and think, how in the world did that happen? And all you'll be able to do is put your right hand up, your left hand up, and praise Jesus and give Him all the glory. Amen? Amen. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. We've got to get into the Word. We've got to get into church. We've got to know what He has given us. Because when we do, we will be people that know their God, and we will do exploits, as it says in the book of Daniel. Amen? Amen. Those that know their God will do exploits. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. I don't want to be destroyed, do you? I'm giving myself over to the Word of God. I'm giving myself over to the power of the Holy Spirit. And I'm getting the Word of God inside of me. I want it to dwell richly in me so that I can be a destroyer of Satan. So that I can see giants slain, cities taken, and the kingdom of God built for Almighty God. Amen? Amen. That's what we're supposed to be doing. The Word of God is able to correct anything the Word of God that sits on your lap, on your coffee table at the house, the Word of God can change anything, can correct anything that is absolutely out of order in this world. How many of you think there's some things that are not correct going on in this world right now? The Word of God can fix that. Hallelujah! 
How? Well, the Word of God has got to get off your lap, has got to get out of the, of, of the binding, the leather binding of that book. It's got to get off the coffee table, and it's got to get into your heart. It's got to be on your mouth. You've got to be confessing it, declaring it, speaking the Word. You've got to let the Word of God dwell richly in your heart. You've got to meditate, dwell on, think about what the Word of God says. If it says, I'm to have joy and peace, then I need to think about the one who lives in me, the Prince of Peace. Amen. The Prince of Peace stood up in a boat and he said, peace be still to the winds and the sea. And there was instantly peace and the disciples were in awe. They were absolutely in awe. This Prince of Peace said, peace I give unto you, not as the world gives. It's a peace that, that people have no clue exists until they experience Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? You have that kind of peace. And until we meditate, dwell on, think about the Prince of Peace that lives inside of us, we won't experience that peace. A lot of people have panic attacks. Everyone say, yuck, yuck. yuck, yuck. Who in the heck wants a panic attack? You never need a panic attack. You never need to worry. Our Bible says, cast your cares upon him because he cares for you. Don't worry. Don't be concerned. Don't have any fret or anxiety in your life. The Prince of Peace lives in you. You don't have to be worried about global economy. You don't have to be worried uh, uh, about what the world is going to throw at us next. The Prince of Peace lives inside of you. And you realize who lives inside of you, and that word dwells richly inside of you, and the word of God inside of you is bigger than all the chaos this world can throw. You stand up, and he will speak through you. This living Jesus that's alive inside of you will speak up, and he will say, Peace, be still. And all the chaos of the world will cease and stop. That's who you are. You're that powerful for Almighty God. You're a child of the King. You have been given the Word of God. You've been given the Holy Spirit. You've been given angels. You've been given the blood of Jesus Christ. You have power with Him. Amen? Amen. He said, I give you power to tread upon scorpions and snakes. Right. You are more powerful than the devil. The devil, all he can do is lie. And I'm not going to buy his lie. I'm going to get into the truth of God's word. It's the ultimate truth. It's the only truth. It, Jesus himself said, I am the truth. Amen? Amen? That's who lives inside of you. Prosperity. What's the kingdom of God about? It's about prosperity. It's about abundance. It's about more than enough. It's about Him supplying all your needs according to His riches and glory through Christ Jesus. It's about you giving and, and you receiving back more than you gave. Pressed down, shaken together, running over. It's about Him opening the windows of heaven, pouring out blessings so great you can't contain them. Every phrase I just spoke came from the Word of God. Throughout Genesis to Revelation, his plan for mankind is to be rich, is to be prosperous, is to have abundance. There's so much in this earth. Each one of us could be a multi-billionaire, and there would be more than enough left over. Whoo, glory to God, think of that. You say, well, how do I obtain that kind of wealth? Everyone put your hand on your belly and say, it's right here. Right here. The kingdom of God is here. This kind of wealth, this kind of prosperity, this kind of abundance is here. Yes, when we meditate upon the Word of God, dwell upon the Word of God, get the Word of God dwelling richly in us, right. and pray in the Holy Ghost, and say, Holy Spirit, you cause this Word to live richly inside of me and put me into a wealthy place. You did it with the children of Israel. You did it with all the saints that served you with all their hearts. Try to think of one person in the Bible that served God with all of his heart that was impoverished. You can't come up with anyone. One person told me Job. I said, how did he end up? 
They said seven times richer than when he began. Glory to God. I'm telling you, he can lead you into a wealthy place. Amen? Amen. Take the limits off of God. Take the limits off his word. His word is all powerful. Dwell on it. Right. Meditate on it. Get that word living deep inside your heart. Speak it out of your mouth. And don't waver. Don't let the devil come quickly, suddenly, and try to talk you out of it. Amen? Amen. Healing. Glory to God. Is anyone sick in heaven? Is there any disease in heaven? Is there any infirmity in heaven? No. On earth as it is in heaven, Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth, on earth as it is in heaven. No sickness, no disease, no infirmity in heaven. You and I, our job is to enforce that on this earth. How do we do it? Again, dwell on the Word of God. Look up every scripture. Read those scriptures out loud. Read them until you can, you can say them verbatim without even looking at them. They roll off your tongue without even thinking about it. The Word of God must dwell in us richly and pray in the Holy Ghost that the power of the Holy Ghost would come upon you and energize those words so that when you do speak them there's a change in this earth there's a change in people's bodies the wisdom of God how many y'all think we need some wisdom on this earth <laughs> wisdom is divine profound common sense it's profound common sense but it's divine it comes from Almighty God that is wisdom we need wisdom on this earth. And every man and every woman can't come up with their own wisdom. There's only one wisdom. His name is Jesus. There's only one that is supreme. There's only one with ultimate authority, ultimate truth, and that is Jesus. Amen? Amen. And when we bow our knee to him and we acknowledge that he and he alone is wisdom, it will flow out of us the most perplexing situations will be easy to solve for your own life, for your family's life, for the community, for the state, for the region, for the nation. It's simplicity. The answers are simple. And God has those answers. But where are they? Put your hand on your belly. Say, it's right here. The kingdom of God is within me. Say it. The kingdom of God is within me. Wisdom dwells inside of me. Yes, amen. And you read the Word. And you read the Word. And you read the Word. And you see that God, time and time and time again, had a simple answer for the people. It's a simple answer. And when we obey Him and walk in His statutes, we will be walking in wisdom. In other words, when kids obey their parents, they're walking in wisdom. All the parents shout, Amen. 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 When wives respect their husbands, they're walking in wisdom. Say amen. amen. Here you go, wives. I'll help you out. When husbands love their wives, everyone say, oh my. <laughs> when husbands love their wives, they're walking in wisdom. Amen. amen. When employers are kind to the employees, they're walking in wisdom. Amen. Amen. When the employee shows up on time and actually works from the time they clock in until they clock out, someone shout amen. amen. They're walking in wisdom. So that is what wisdom is. It's obedience to the Word of God. You say, well, what, what am I supposed to do? Read the second half of each epistle. That's wisdom. Walking in wisdom. Strength. So many people are wore out. They're tired. They're exhausted. If you watch the news day in and day out, if you read every article on the Internet, you will be wore out. But the Word of God will give you supernatural strength. And that supernatural strength is inside of you. It's the kingdom of God. Put your hand on your belly and say, strength is inside of me. I mean supernatural strength. Strength like Samson. You take up a jawbone of a donkey, 
King James uses a different word. My wife would beat me senseless if I used it. He picked up the jawbone of a donkey and he whooped up on a bunch of Philistines. Supernatural strength. There was a prophet, he outran the king's chariot. I'm telling you, that kind of strength is residing inside of you right now. There's nothing to be afraid of. There's nothing to be worried about. Almighty God lives inside of you and you activate that strength by speaking, I walk in the strength of God. I walk in the power of God. The power of God. The power of the Holy Spirit is upon me. I do exploits for my God. Amen? Amen. 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 And you have to be mindful of this. You keep it at the forefront of, of your mind. The, the knowledge of it is forever in front of you. We're a supernatural people. We've been endued. We've been gifted with supernatural gifts. And you have to constantly remind yourself, the power of the Holy Spirit is upon me. The Word of God is active and alive inside of me. It always accomplishes what it's sent out to do. It never returns to God void and empty. It's a supernatural book. Amen? Amen. And when I take it off the coffee table, when I take it out between the, the bindings of that book, and I let it out of my mouth, I see great things happen. And I stand in faith. You say, well, where's the manifestation? Don't worry about it. It will happen. Amen? And quickly. And quickly. Now, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 20, we read that each one of us is an ambassador. Everyone shout, I am an ambassador. I am an ambassador. Am ambassador. Say it again, ambassador. ambassador. You are an ambassador for the kingdom of heaven. You have been given a special place in God's kingdom. You are a representation of God's kingdom on this earth. That's your job. That's who you are. You're an ambassador for the kingdom of God. Can you imagine being an ambassador for the United States of America in the United Kingdom? Wouldn't that be a, a, a lofty position to have? You might even have dinner with the queen. Wouldn't that be something? But you're an ambassador for something even greater than the United States. You're an ambassador for the kingdom of Almighty God. It says in 2 Corinthians 5.20, we are ambassadors of the anointed one. That's Jesus. We're ambassadors of the anointed one who carries the message of Christ to the world. That's your job. That's your responsibility. You're to carry the word of God to this world. How can we carry anything unless we know what's in us? We've got to have a knowledge of what we have. How do you gain that knowledge? You get into the Word. You listen to preaching on television, on the Internet. You, you get into, uh, into books. You come to church. You get knowledge. Don't be destroyed for a lack of knowledge. There's an answer for everything you face. It's in the Word of God. And you get knowledge of it. And you have, you have to give that Word to the world as though Jesus was tenderly pleading with the world directly through your lips. We tenderly plead with the world on Christ's behalf to turn back to God and to be reconciled with Him. As an ambassador, you're to activate, you're to appropriate the Word of God by faith. Everyone say, by faith. By faith. We do it by faith. That's why faith is so important. A lot of people say, why, what's all this faith, 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 faith? Word of faith, word of faith, word of faith, word of faith. That's a phrase in the book of Romans that the Apostle Paul used. We are to speak the word of faith. And we appropriate, we turn on, we activate the promises of God, the power of God, the kingdom of God that is within us, by words. Faith speaks is what we're told in the New Testament. If we're not speaking the Word of God, then we're not speaking faith. If we speak the problem, then, dear sweet Jesus, we're going to have the problem forever. But when we speak the Word of God, we're speaking the solution, and we will see the solution come. In the name of Jesus, rise up and be healed. That is the solution. Peter grabbed him by the right hand, pulled him up, and instantly his feet and ankle bones became whole. 
in the name of Jesus, be healed. Glory to God. You appropriate and activate everything by faith, by the Word of God, and by the power of the Holy Spirit. You release these promises. You release the kingdom of God within you by faith. Jesus taught us to pray, and I alluded to this earlier, in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 9 through 13. After this manner, we're to pray, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. On earth as it is in heaven. What's in heaven? Again, from Genesis to Revelation, we see a manifestation, a display, a demonstration of heaven touching earth. We see Jesus walking on water, multiplying the bread, multiplying the fish. We see Jesus saying, throw your net on the right side of the boat. And they get boat sinking uh, hauls of fish after fishing all night. We see him turn water to wine. Glory to God. We see miracle after miracle. The storm is, is absolutely put at peace. A fig tree is withered up and dies. We see miracle after miracle walking on water. Excuse me, how many of y'all have done that recently? <laughs> it's been a while. We need to practice that some more, I guess. This is so important. The message, the word of the kingdom. We've got to have a working knowledge of this. The message of the kingdom in Matthew's gospel, chapter 13 and verse 19, the seed that fell on the beaten path represents the heart of one who hears the message of the kingdom realm but does not understand it. There's people that hear the word. They hear the message, but they just can't, they just can't wrap their head around it. They can't understand it. They can't get it. They hear about pr that God wants you to prosper, and they're like, what are you talking about? You're one of those blab it and grab it preachers. Name it and claim it preachers. You're a, you're a faith preacher. Well, I don't want to be a doubt preacher. I don't want to be an unbelief preacher. You've got to say what the Word of God says, and you will see it. Matthew 13 19 you may want to jot this down it's a scripture that you've got to get a hold of why don't we see more manifestations of the miraculous more of the supernatural why aren't we experiencing it this is one of the answers the seed the Word of God falls on beaten paths that represents the heart of those that hear the message or the word of the kingdom of God and they don't understand it. Healing. They're sick. They've been sick so long. They're, they're so close to death. They're closer to death than life. What are you talking about? God can instantly, totally, completely, 100% restore every fiber of their body. Knees that are shot, that's nothing to God. A body that's been on life support for a month and a half and the, the temperature is 107 degrees and they're 87 pounds and, 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 and they haven't eaten anything at all, that's nothing for God. Is He almighty or not? Has He forgotten how to perform miracles? This is nothing for Him. How does it happen? If it was up to God, He would just walk through every hospital every bedroom where people needed a profound touch and they would jump up off the bed. Where do these miracles reside that I'm speaking of? Put your hand on your belly and say right here is the kingdom of heaven, is the kingdom of God. Almighty God lives inside of me and he wants to move through me. And when we open our mouths and we start proclaiming and we start preaching and we start saying the Word of God and we, we just boldness of the Holy Ghost comes upon us and we sweetly and gently and lovingly put our hand on someone and say, in the name of Jesus, be healed. We'll see the power of God move. And you stand in faith. It's faith, a living faith. The instant you do it, 
It has happened. You believe when you pray, you will see it. Amen? Amen. In Matthew's Gospel, chapter 16 and verse 19, Jesus said, I give you the keys to the kingdom. I'll give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Is there abundance in heaven? He said here that he has given us keys to the kingdom. How many of y'all would like the keys to Warren Buffett's house? Bill Gates' house. How about keys that we mentioned earlier to the Queen's house? I, I don't think she'd be too happy if she heard us calling her house a house. Can you imagine? Keys to the Queen's castle. And they're in your pocket. All of the UK is yours. Go where you want. You've got the keys. You have the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Where are they? Put your hand on your belly. Say, right here are the keys. They'll open any door to the kingdom of heaven. What are the doors? Healing, prosperity, peace, joy, strength, all the things you need in life to live successful. They're right here. You get into the Word of God, meditate on the Word of God, you open your mouth, as it just said, you bind it on earth, it'll be bound in heaven, you loose it, it'll be loosed. You say in the mighty name of Jesus, I bind Satan from my finances. I command my finances to come quickly from the north, east, south, and west. Angels, bring them into my household. Now, do you stay on your couch all week and watch Oprah and eat popcorn? Everyone say, no. You get into the Word, and you get up off the couch, and you go to work, and you show up on time. Amen? Amen. You give God something to work with, but you realize that job is not your source. God is your source. Amen. And He can get finances to you a thousand different directions, and you stay in faith, and you expect it, and you'll see it happen. The Word of God is working in me. I am the healed of the Lord. The kingdom of God resides in me. The power of the kingdom resides in me. I bind sickness. There isn't any sickness in heaven. I refuse it to be in my body. I command it to leave and I command health to take over this body. Divine health to take over this body. So Father God, we praise and we thank you that the kingdom of heaven is ours. The kingdom of your dear son dwells within us. All the promises of Almighty God are yes and amen. The great and precious promises of Almighty God dwell within us because all the kingdom of God is there. I thank you, Father God, that we grow in the wisdom and the knowledge of your word and the power of the Holy Spirit. And as we do, we're known as a people of faith. We're known as people that know you and therefore we do exploits. And we give you all the praise and all the glory and all the thanks. We acknowledge you our supreme. You're our King, our Lord, our Master, and our Savior, and we love you with all our hearts. So, Father, I thank you that this week people are stirred to their, to their very core about seeking you and putting your kingdom first. And we praise you and we thank you for it. In the mighty name of Jesus, everyone shout amen.